At this time, the prime crew for Apollo 11 has boarded the high-speed elevator from inside the A-level in the mobile launcher, which is the second level inside the launcher. This is a high-speed elevator, 600 feet per minute, which will carry them to the 320-foot level, uh, the spacecraft level. The spacecraft commander, Neil Armstrong, now aboard the Apollo 11 spacecraft at the 320-foot level at the pad. Right on the hour, the uh, command module pilot, astronaut Michael Collins, who will be sitting on the right-hand side of the spacecraft during liftoff, uh, boarded the spacecraft. We had it logged at 7 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time. The third member of the Apollo 11 Prime crew now aboard the spacecraft. We had it logged at 7.07 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time when astronaut Buzz Aldrin boarded the spacecraft. He will sit in the middle seat uh, during liftoff. As lunar module pilot, his normal position uh, would be on the right-hand side. However, due to crew preference, uh, we have uh, the commander, of course, Neil Armstrong, sitting on the left-hand side, the lunar module pilot for the overall flight, Buzz Aldrin, sitting in the middle seat, and the command module pilot, Mike Collins, uh, sitting on the right-hand seat at liftoff. This is Apollo Saturn Launch Control, T-minus two hours, seven minutes and counting. At this time, we're just in the process of closing the hatch on the Apollo 11 spacecraft. Uh, several of the closeout crew shook hands with the astronauts and then proceeded to close the hatch on direction from the spacecraft test conductor, Skip Chauvin. We do have uh, information from the civil defense uh, agencies in the area. The estimate is more than a million persons are in the immediate area in Brevard County uh, to watch the launch. All still going well with the countdown. A short while ago, the spacecraft test conductor Skip Chauvin asked uh, Neil Armstrong if the crew was comfortable up there. And uh, Neil reported back, he said, it's, we're very comfortable, it's very nice this morning. The astronauts in the spacecraft busy again. The commander, Neil Armstrong, has uh, performed some final uh, switch settings for the stabilization and control system of the spacecraft. The spacecraft also now is on full internal power. This came shortly after the 15-minute mark. The spacecraft now on the full power of its fuel cells. Up to this time, it had been sharing the load with an external power source. Four minutes, 15 seconds, the test supervisor now has informed launch vehicle test yeah, conductor and Norm Carlson, you are gone for the launch. Our status board indicates that the oxidizer tanks in the second and third stages now have pressurized. We continue to build up pressure in all three stages uh, here at the last minute uh, to prepare it for liftoff. Ignition sequence starts. Six. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. Lift off. 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 Velocity 2,195 feet per second. I don't fly how you look a good flight. GFC. Start model. Pressure red line. Eight pounds. Seven feet line. Where? Yeah, it don't make a difference. No difference. Okay, let's punch it in. Everything is go, Ralph. We're through the region of maximum dynamic pressure now. Ignition. Roger. Neil Armstrong confirming both the engine skirt right, separation right, and the launch escape tower yeah, separation. Right. Houston, be advised the visual is go today. Mode 4 and Apollo 11 could get into orbit using the service propulsion system now. Altitude is 100 miles, downrange 883 right. miles. Outboard engine. Engine and ignition. Ignition confirmed, thrust is go. Ignition confirmed, thrust is go, 11. Shut down. Okay, we are showing 101.4 by 103.6. Roger, shut 
10, we copy 101.4 by 103.6. Ignition. We have ignition flight. We're go. Thrust is go. Okay. We confirm ignition and the thrust is go.
have a picture. We see the earth right in the center of the screen, over. Roger, Houston, Apollo 11. Calling in from about 130,000 miles out. And uh, we'll zoom our camera in slowly uh, to get the most magnification we can. Uh, All right, it's Big Mike Collins there. There you go, a little bit of him. Yeah, hello there, sports fans. You got a little bit of me, plus Neil's in the center couch, and Buzz is doing the camera work this time. All right, do we copy? And, um, as uh, we pan back out to uh, the distance at which we see the Earth, we'll have Apollo 11 signing off. Coming up in uh, less than uh, 10 seconds now, we'll be uh, crossing into the sphere of influence of the moon. A computational uh, changeover will be made here in mission control at this point as the uh, moon's gravitational force becomes the uh, dominant effect on the spacecraft trajectory and our displays will shift from Earth reference to Moon reference. At that point, which occurred a few seconds ago, the uh, spacecraft was at a distance of 186,437 nautical miles from Earth and 33,822 nautical miles from the Moon. See that real big 
knowing that today is Independence Day in the country of Columbia. This is Apollo Control. We have about 33 minutes left in this pass before loss of signal. Uh, Neil Armstrong confirmed that uh, the LAM power switch occurred at 95 hours 54 minutes, which would have put the uh, uh, put that activity about 30 minutes ahead of the flight plan schedule. And that appears to be about the pace that the crew is holding, that uh, Armstrong and Aldrin are holding and getting the LAM activated and checked out. At this time, Buzz Aldrin has returned to the command and service module where he'll be donning his pressure garment and then rejoin uh, Armstrong in Eagle. Lights on. Six. 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 Six
down two and a half. Stay for T1. Hey, it looks like we're bending the oxidizer now. Roger, Eagle, and you are stay for T1. Eagle, control. you are we're stay for T1. Okay, this 16G is just like the airplane. Right, uh, Tranquility, uh, 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 Tranquility uh, be advised, there are lots of smiling faces in this room and all over the world. Over. What's his attitude look like, guys? All right, two of them up here. Pitched, uh, right, it was a beautiful job, you guys. And don't forget one in the command module. Right. Four and a half and yard north about 12. Yes, sir. Uh, she might be interested to know that uh, I don't think we noticed any difficulty at all in adapting to 16G. Uh, it seems uh, immediately natural to move in, uh, in this environment. Roger, Crank, Tranquility, we copy, over. From the surface, uh, we could not see any uh, stars uh, out, out the window, but uh, on my overhead hatch, I'm uh, looking at the Earth. Big and bright, beautiful. Uh, I'm just going to give uh, a try at uh, seeing some stars through the optic. It isn't like Roger, Roger Tranquility, we understand, must be a beautiful sight, over. It's a hydraulic pressure. Uh, Columbia Houston, we noticed you maneuvering very close to gimbal lock. I uh, suggest you move back away, over. Control flight 
to the skull and sides of my boot. I only go in a uh, small fraction of an inch, maybe an eighth of an inch, but I can see the footprints of my uh, boots and the treads in the fine sandy particles. Yeah, this is Houston. We're copying.
Thank you, Mr. President. It's a great honor and privilege for us to be here representing not only the United States, but and of peace of all nations, and with interest and a curiosity and, and with the vision for the future. Uh, honor for us to be able to participate here today. And thank you very much, and I look forward, all of us look forward to seeing you on the Hornet on Thursday. Look forward to that very much, sir. This is Houston. It's about time for you to start your EVA closeout activities. Tranquility, we observed your equipment jettison on the TV and the uh, passive seismic experiment recorded shocks when uh, each plus hit the surface over. You can't get away with anything anymore, can you? No, indeed. Eagle Houston, now you're looking good too. Pings, Axe, 
And the place is cleared out a little bit after that rendezvous. You can uh, find a place to sit down almost, huh? Uh, Roger, our moker's uh, about empty right now. We're uh, taking it a little easy. Uh, How does it feel up here to have some company? Damn good, I'll tell you. Uh, I bet. Uh, I bet you're going to be talking to yourself up there out the 10 revs or so. Roger. Okay. No, no, it's a happy home up here. It'd be nice to have uh, some company. As a matter of fact, it'd be nice to have a couple uh, hundred million Americans up here. Roger, right, so well, they were with you in spirit. what they're getting for their money. Roger, right, they were with you in spirit anyway, at least that many. Uh, we heard on the uh, news today, 11, that uh, last night after you, uh, yesterday after you, you made your landing, the uh, New York Times came out with a uh, headlines, the largest headlines they've ever used in the history of the newspaper. There's a copy. I'm glad to hear it was fit to print. Did it in its place? Closet? No, no, it's not in there. It doesn't have that closet anymore. Last I saw it was up on the NBC. I gave it, I hear it over to the NBC. Yeah, I stuck it up for him. That's a brand new home for us. Is that an old home? It's an old urine bag. Man, that feels like G, doesn't it? Ten minutes ago, we logged what we expect to be our last contact with Eagle in lunar orbit. That coming at 
uh, 137 hours, 55 minutes elapsed time. At that time, the uh, battery power fell below the level where the secondary guidance system could hold the attitude of the vehicle within the steerable antenna limits. We do not uh, expect to establish contact with Eagle again. This is Apollo Control at 143 hours. Apollo 11 is 20,704 nautical miles from the moon. Velocity 4,390 feet per second. Crew still in the rest period. The Weather Bureau Space Flight Meteorology Group reported this morning that weather conditions in the primary landing area are expected to be acceptable. Sky uh, partly cloudy, winds easterly at 10 knots, and seas of three feet are predicted. Tropical storm Claudia is now located 2,300 miles east of the landing area and will not affect the weather in the landing area Thursday. This is Mission Control Houston. This is Apollo Control at 148 hours, 7 minutes. In about 24 seconds from now, the spacecraft will pass the imaginary line into the Earth's sphere of influence. Stand by for a mark leaving the lunar sphere of influence. Mark, you're leaving the lunar sphere of influence, over. Is uh, Bill Jaffer down here? Uh, negative, but we've got uh, a highly qualified team on in his stead. Right, I wanted to hear him explain it again at the press conference. Okay. That's the old Apollo 8 joke, but tell him the spacecraft gave a little jump as he went through the sphere. Okay, I'll pass it on to him. Tell him thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Dave Reed is sort of burying his head in his arms right now. Roger that. Those guys down here in the train have been doing a pretty good job this morning. Yes, they have.
Robert, 60 hours, 10 minutes. Ground elapsed time, this is Apollo Control. The uh, West Coast residents in uh, Seattle, Washington, Portland, Oregon, Vancouver, British Columbia, San Francisco, all plan to make their areas visible to the three of you by lighting their lights between 9 p.m. and midnight tonight, according to the Associated Press. We do have clear weather predicted there so that you may be able to see Christmas lights, porch lights, store lights, and whatever may be turned on. A little closer to home here, uh, back in Memphis, Tennessee, a young lady uh, who is presently tipping the scales at eight pounds, two ounces, uh, was named a module by her parents, Mr. and Mrs. Eddie Lee McGee. It wasn't uh, my idea, said Mrs. McGee, it was my husband's. She said she had balked at the name uh, Lunar Module McGee because it didn't sound uh, too good, but apparently they have compromised on just module, over. For general information, 11, you are now 905,970 miles out from the Earth, over. Backyard. Say again. Right in our own backyard. Uh, Apollo 11, you Go ahead. Hi, uh, Roger. We don't uh, want to jettison the uh, hydrogen tank that's uh, stratified, so could you cycle the uh, fans in uh, tank two, please? Hydrogen tank two. You better believe. That old service marshal's taking good care of us. We're taking care of it. It sure has, hasn't it? It's been a champ. Apollo 11, Houston, we see you getting ready for set. Uh, everything looks mighty fine down here. Same here, Ryan. Thank you. Apollo 11, Houston, uh, you're still looking mighty fine here. Uh, you're cleared for landing. Yeah, we appreciate that, Ron Hanks. Ron Skier's down in Lark. Roger. Hey, 11 Houston, you going over the hill there shortly? You're looking mighty fine to us. See you later. We're at entry time. Blackout very shortly. Range to go to splash, 1,533. There's blackout. The Hornet now reports a visual contact. Visual contact from the recovery ship. Thank you. 
resources now. Swim one, a helicopter, and uh, aircraft one another. The swimmer with the biological isolation garments is in the raft next to the spacecraft. That's Lieutenant Clancy Handelberg of Chippewa Falls, Wisconsin. He's also wearing a biological isolation guard. The recovery one is in position, uh, lowering the bag of at this time. Astronauts. The curtains have been drawn, and there they are in the rear, rear window. The president signaling for applause from the crowd. Astronauts gather in the window. 
Neil, Buzz, and Mike, I want you to know that I think I'm the luckiest man in the world. And I say this not only because I have the honor to be President of the United States, but particularly because I have the privilege of uh, speaking for so many and welcoming you back to Earth. 